Okay, characteristics of quadratics. Um, if you recall, whenever we talked about linear functions, it was linear. We could tell how uh, tell it was linear based on the exponent. Since this exponent is two, it has a degree of two. That means this is quadratic if the highest exponent is two. It's not linear because there is a written exponent on the x. So it's not going to graph like a straight line like a linear function would. The graph of a quadratic function is called a parabola. It has one turning point called the vertex. You can find the point, the vertex, the x, the formula for the, finding the x is the opposite of b over 2a. Now, the opposite of b means that if b is positive, you change it to a negative. If b is negative, you change it to a positive. Whenever you calculate what the x is, you plug it back into the equation and find out what y is. <clears throat> a parabola is symmetrical, meaning identical on both sides of the axis of symmetry. To write the equation for the axis of symmetry, it's x equals whatever the x of the vertex is. Some things you can tell just by looking at an equation if it's in standard form. If the leading coefficient, or a, is positive, the graph opens upward. And the vertex is at the very bottom, so it's a minimum. If that first number, the leading coefficient a, is negative, the graph opens downward. And that vertex is at the top, so it's a maximum. Okay. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. So if I went over here and I took out these x's and I changed them to 0, all I'd be left with is whatever that last number is. So it's also c when the equation is in standard form, that constant. <clears throat> The x-intercept is where y equals 0, so we have to solve for x, which that involves like what we did last week with the factoring, and then there are some other methods we'll talk about later on. The domain, how far to the right and left the graph goes, that's the x's. It is always all real numbers if there aren't any parameters. For example, if it's not a word problem or if they don't set parameters. The range, a parabola doesn't go up all the way or down all the way. It has a stopping point. The range, it's the y's. It's how far up or down the graph goes. If the vertex is a minimum, let me show you what a parabola looks like. If the vertex is a minimum, that means it opens upward like this. It's an up, upward u. That vertex is at the bottom, and all of the other points are above that vertex. So the range depends on the vertex and how the other points go. So if the vertex is at the bottom, if it's a minimum, the range is all of the y's, as long as those y's are greater than or equal to the y of the vertex. If the vertex is a maximum, meaning the graph opens downward like that, then, <clears throat> excuse me, then all of those other points are below that vertex, so the range is all of the y's, as long as those y's are less than or equal to the y of the vertex. Okay, let me get out page two. Okay, so we're going to use a table of values to graph this parabola. So if you notice, this first number here is a positive, so our parabola is going to open upward, and our vertex is going to be a minimum. So in order to graph this parabola, you can pick as many x's as you want, but we want some specific, a couple of specific points. We're going to start with the vertex because that's the most important part, the most important 
important point. So the X of the vertex, the X of the vertex, it's the opposite of B. And in this case, here's A, here's B, and here's C. It's the opposite of 6 over 2 times A, which is 3. So the X of the vertex is negative 1. To find out what the Y is, I'm going to take this equation, I'm going to take out all the X's and change them to negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 minus 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. Three minus six is negative three minus four means that the y of the vertex is negative seven and that's the vertex right there. Another point that we can tell just by looking at the equation since it is in standard form, the y-intercept is where x is zero and when x is zero our y-intercept is negative four. Now I want to show you how we can find another point on that graph very very easily and we're just going to sketch this okay so negative 1 negative 7 is our vertex and 0 negative 4 is our y-intercept our every parabola has an axis of symmetry that cuts it in half and it goes right through the vertex on um, Every point on the, on the parabola besides the vertex has an identical twin on the other side of the vertex. So there's a point right there, one to the left of that axis of symmetry, and that point would be negative 2, negative 4. And then we can sketch our parabola. Now one thing is for sure, a parabola is a curve. There is no straight sides in a parabola. Okay, so now we're going to do the domain. The domain is all real numbers. The range depends on the vertex. That vertex is the lowest point. Everything else is above it. So it's all the y's as long as those y's are above the y of that vertex. That vertex is the minimum value. The minimum value here is the y of the vertex, so y equals negative 7 is the minimum value. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. It's whatever the x of the vertex is. And the y-intercept is negative okay example number 2a we don't have to graph it we can find the vertex the equation of the axis of symmetry and the y-intercept the domain and the range all based on how to find the vertex so we're going to find the vertex the x of the vertex is the opposite of 6 over 2 times a, which is negative 3, which is 1. So the x of the vertex is 1. To find the y, we take 1 and we put it into the x's. So negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 5. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So the vertex is 1, negative 2. It says to identify the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry, x, um, let's write. The axis of symmetry is x equals 1. Y-intercept is negative 5. Remember, it's the last number or the constant in the trinomial if it's written in standard form. 
the domain is always all real numbers and the range depends on the vertex since this first number is negative that means our graph opens downward and the vertex is the highest point meaning everything else is below it so all of the y's as long as they are less than or equal to negative 2 which is the y of the vertex Okay, B. So we're going to find the vertex first. The X of the vertex, the opposite of B over 2 times A. So the X of this vertex is negative 1 half. To find the Y, I'm going to take that negative 1 half and I'm going to put it into the equation. Negative one half squared is one fourth. Two times one fourth is one half. Two times negative one half is negative one. One half minus one is negative one half. Negative one half plus two is one and a half. So the vertex is negative one half, one and one half. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative one half. The y intercept is positive two. The domain is all real numbers. And the range depends on what that vertex is, and since that is a positive that means it opens upward and our vertex is the lowest point meaning all of the others are above one and one half